so so here we basically will be understanding about uh, android not the application part but as a operating system and how does it work how what's its architecture made of how does it look like and we'll also try to see a demo to understand uh, the complete flow but before jumping into it um i wanted to one second yeah i don't know what's wrong yeah so couple of things which i'm sure you guys will be uh, already aware about uh so all the androids till android 9 i believe yeah was given names uh on 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 sweets basically or desserts you can say um started with apple pie somewhere if you if you read it will also say that it's alpha android alpha then uh beta also came in it's not mentioned here but after that cupcake donut these are all sweets right desserts so and the second thing that you can i mean uh you you will the moment you want try to look into it properly you'll understand that it's it's like alphabetical order a b c d e f g so that's that's how they did it this was one of the very fascinating thing when i started learning android what is it how is it i started using android when it was uh, 2.22 it clear um uh and yeah uh there was one more fact which i wanted to ask basically rather than share uh, this would be for everyone uh, after the tech, tech show i mean talk show is given talk is given um the question is uh, which android was uh, made only and only for the tablet so this is something which you guys need to answer post the session moving ahead um a quick walk through on what android is we all know it's open source um it's a linux ba linux based um and the devices that it mostly uses is our smartphones watches uh, android tvs apple uh, not apple uh, android car play i believe uh, is the one which is used in vehicles tablets are there computers are also come in and lot more um for example you will also you you would have heard about uh, the specs that that comes with android os in in that so similarly there are so many different things which are coming in and one last point of which i wanted to share was about uh, who founded the android people people say that it's google it's actually not google but it's uh, one of the other companies and google led it i mean they helped uh the company called open handset alliances uh so that's that's that was the starting of android now let's jump into the topic um what are the different components and the architecture of an android operating system so there will be five uh components to it um and and for us to understand we will be always doing it in a bottom up approach wherein the bottom part is the linux kernel um what are these things uh, and and how do they work i'll be covering it up one by one but just to give you an overview this is how the framework basically looks like there is a linux kernel on top of it there are libraries um and the same layer actually there are android runtime art uh, above that there is application framework and then on top there is applications um so you can consider below the linux kernel is your hardware and above the application layer is you right so moving on uh, we'll be firstly covering up as i said the last layer or the core layer which is the linux kernel so uh, as we all know linux kernel it, it's like an interface between the uh, hardware components that your mobile has as you can see in the animation uh like there is screen there is keypad there are speakers and so many other things cameras so linux what it does is it provides an interface um for the uh, upper layer i mean the application uh sorry the the what was the library layer to interact or to make use of uh, the hardware components 
I'll explain properly in the last uh, last slide where I have given an example. You guys will understand that very well. I'm sure on that part. So please bear with me for a couple more couple of more minutes. So yeah, um, as I was telling, that's the base layer. We also call it as core layer. Apart from just providing the you know interface, it also does what is it whatever it is good at. I mean Linux. Uh, if I have to talk about so Linux, as we all know, it's very good at memory security management. So it also does process management, device management, and many more. Uh, moving on to the next. Um, so the libraries and the ART. So they they both are two different. Um, I would say. Uh, uh, layers it's but they come under one layer itself as in one uh, slab itself I would say uh, to understand this I would my, my approach would be to uh, tell you guys like for example in a hardware device or let's consider your mobile device itself your mobile device has uh, how much 256 MB oh, sorry GB of space or 512 whatever so that is ROM uh, in in our computer languages, right? And then there is RAM also. So to store data into your ROM or RAM, SQLite is the database which is being used. And to do the interaction, as you all just now uh, discussed about, kernel will help. So this layer basically consists of all this, um, I would say, the drivers, which helps you to, I mean, uh, kernel has all the drivers, I'm sorry, but this layer has all those, uh, in, I mean, all those tools or, or um, the different, uh, what was that, libraries, I was not getting the point. So yeah, so this, this layer has all the libraries to make, uh, to let, let the data flow within, from here to there, one segment to the other segment, uh, basically. So you can see there is, uh, SQL or uh, storage based data, I mean storage based uh, libraries, there is, let's say if you are using internet, you need WebKit or uh, something which is needed for your internet access. Uh, for you to view or graphical representation has to be shown, uh, 3D graphical representation, I mean, so for that OpenGL is used for secure, secure uh, transactions uh, or request that whatever happens over the uh, your internet or HTTP requests uh, that's where SSL comes into picture and to view audio video or record uh, media framework is used apart from that there are other uh, other libraries too uh, but just to give you guys an overview I believe uh, you would have got at least a gist of it now moving to the second part of it which is the Android runtime uh, we also call it as ART like um, it's it's very similar to Java, wherein we use JVM, Java Virtual Machine. So here it is Dalvik Virtual Machine. So uh, as we all know, we write code in Java that is converted to classes, and then uh, it is again converted to bytecode at the end. So similarly in Android, uh, the same job is taken care by the uh, Dalvik Dalvik Machine. Who is Dalvik? Um, Dalvik was the they call it as I mean the father of Android, I believe. Uh, do correct me if I'm wrong on that. And so, so Dalvik virtual machine, as I was saying, that's similar to Java. But here, the code either it's written in Java or let's say uh, Kot uh, Kotlin, that will also convert to uh, its own classes, and then from that to Dex, I believe, and from that to Jar, and then to Smiley. Uh, that's how the code is broken down and then to bytecode definitely to machine level understanding and the whole thing is taken care by DVM. Um, so just quick thing to add to this till Android 4.4 there was uh, Dalvik which was being used but after Android 4.4 it's ART Android runtime which is used. Um, we'll be discussing about it later on the difference between the both and how did ART change the whole game plan of Android um, memory management specific, uh, specifically. So 
Yep, and the second part of the Android runtime is the core library part, which helps basically the devs developers to you know make use of all these different libraries to code uh, and and implement in their application. Um, we'll just move to the next slide. Uh, so this is the application framework layer. Um, so there are different managers you you will find here. Uh, so we all know, right, that there is a framework, and then on a framework is used for our application to. I mean, again, uh, in order for our application to make use of all the hardware components, or let's say all the operating system related components, also it needs some sort of a framework. So they have provided a framework layer which has different uh, different managers, you can say, for different purposes. For example. Uh, we'll talk about the activity manager. What is activity? Um, since we are mostly into React, uh, so we, we might not understand activity as uh, that much as a native Android uh, developer would. So activity is nothing but screen. screen. In React, we, we call it a screen, right? Um, but in Android, every single page is an activity. If you come to React, you open a, you, know, you build a React React uh, native application. You will find the first uh, uh, activity would be splash screen activity if you have implemented. After that, there would be the RN main activity that continues throughout the application, no matter whichever screen you go to. But if it's a native app, uh, every single individual page, as I said, will have its own activity name. Um, and yep, the second is content providers. So let's say if you have to share data, publish data, anything uh, that helps to do the same. Um, and yep, I mean, there's location manager, notification manager, as the name itself suggests, uh, you know, my uh, name itself would give you a more understanding about what is it, what is it supposed to do. The last layer about this would be just the application layer. Yeah, so the application layer, that's the topmost layer, which, which we basically interact with. Uh, all the applications sit in, sits in here. So we have three different type of applications to be, uh, you know, segregated to. First is the native applications. Native, by native, I mean the applications which are built in. When you buy an Android device, there are a couple of applications which will be there in the in the device itself which you also cannot uninstall or delete until unless you have done a i would say rooted rooted your phone and then you're trying to do it uh, otherwise you can't for example there is calendar calculator uh, camera so such such sort of applications are the native apps now third party applications are the ones which other companies creates and you know you will find it in your uh, device um, it could be anything let's say Flipkart itself or Amazon or any any other application Instagram Swiggy whatever so those are the third-party applications those are the ones which is not developed by Android themselves right and third which is developer apps developer apps is nothing but what I meant to say is if you are coding you are building the application uh, that's what the developer app would mean basically you can it's it's not mandatory for you to push the code or push the IP, apk to your play store i'm sorry not just apk it there is option of sharing app as well ab ab android bundle yeah so you don't have to necessarily push the build to your play store and then download it from there you can directly run from your mobile i mean directly from your computer so those are the developer apps. Uh, I, I mean, that's what it means. Now we'll see an example about the complete uh, thing that we actually discussed about. So how does the different layer uh, work? So on a real world scenario, um, let's consider an application wherein we have a login screen. You just enter your details, uh, you get inside and you have option to um, you know, profile, you have, you have a profile page wherein you want to change your profile picture, right? 
So if you just think uh, what all things will happen, if you click on the profile picture, it should basically uh, give you a pop up asking for uh, you want to change the profile, edit or view or whatever. Once you do that, let's say you have selected edit or change. Um, it should also ask you, it should ask you for a permission whether you are allowing the application to make use of the device camera or let's say device storage or even the gallery. So after you accept that, uh, it should take you to the respective page, right? Let's say in, in this case, we have taken uh, an option of using the camera. So upon selecting it, the camera opens up. Now, what happens? How does it actually interact with each other? Uh, because the camera, if, if you see the uh, screenshot, not the, the flowchart which I have created, uh, there is a request line that goes up and there is a response that goes from down. Right? So after we click on the uh, image, click click the, I mean, click the photo or the button, from there, what will happen? Our kernel, kernel layer, the line X layer, that will communicate with the camera module that's there in your phone. Uh, I'm not sure if you are, I mean, if you can see that, but there is a camera module which I have tried to, you know, stick a picture of. Uh, that's there in your camera, in your, in your phone. So it will talk to the camera. It will get the relevant data or the image in this case. It will again pass it to the uh, next layer, which was our, uh, the library layer, wherein since it's, it has to do with the graphics, so it will mostly use OpenGL uh, ES library, right, graphic library. And from there, it will take the response uh, as in the image back to the place where you are trying to set the image, right? So if you read properly, you will also see that there is application layer, which I have mentioned as first. That's your application. And there is a box on top, which uh, covers two different screens. That is the whole application framework layer, right? So that framework layer consists of the activity managers, right? If two different activities are taking care, taking, taking, I mean, is, is seen here. Content is being passed from one to other. That's also seen here. And other things are also happening. Um, so this complete uh, workflow will, I, I believe, I believe uh, would give you a bit more understanding about how the different segments or the different parts of your mobile device, you know, interact with each other. And it's, it's, I mean, how does your application uh, takes care of, let's say, um, just not the uh, camera, but also when you're, when, if you have a video option or if you have a talking option, you know, um, voice call option. So it will, uh, it, rather than the camera at that other, other time, the, if it's a voice call thing, it will, it will make use of the, uh, your, your microphone and your speakers. So this is how the flow would mainly be.